guys, Artemis here from Shimsonas and Spas and today we're going to show you how to assemble a square barrel 2.4 meter cedar sauna. This sauna is firewood heated version, so it will have a firewood heater at the back and will be heated by firewood. And this is our firewood heater. It has an extension to go through the back wall so that the feeding of the firewood can be done from outside of the sauna. As it's a good practice to always have a burn out of the sauna, so to burn a couple of loads of wood and make sure all of the volatiles from the paint and protective coating vaporizes and, uh, and, it's, and it's clean to use in the sauna. So we assembled it outside, as you can see we put the flue on and we fired it up. So we're going to load it a couple of times with the firewood and make sure it's completely burned out so there's no volatile so when we fired it up inside the sauna we're not gonna have a lot of smoke coming of it so it's good practice to burn it through so while we have a firewood heater getting burned through we can start assembling and planning our sauna so this this sauna is 2.4 meters as I said and it comes with three support crates so we have one two three and we need to position it and make sure everything is straight and we measure all the distances on the slab. So what we did, we decided we're going to have a bit of a porch at the front and move the sauna back as much as possible on the slab. So we have we have 100 mil off the slab on the edge to the crate and the staves of the sauna will be hanging off the crate by about 100 mil. So it's important to also measure the distance from the edge of the crate to the center point of the stage from both sides and make sure it's exactly the same to the center point of the stage. And we do exactly the same on the other side before we screw it in. Another important point is we, we also need to measure the side length of the crate to another edge of the crate on both sides and make sure it is equal as well as we need to measure the diagonals to make sure that the one diagonal is exactly the same as the other diagonal. This will make sure that our sauna assembly goes smooth and when assembled the sauna will be nice and straight with minimum gaps. and you know that your crates are sitting straight so the distances on the side are equal on both sides the diagonals are equal on both sides the middle crate is also sitting right in the middle so you just measure it after that we can start securing it we've secured the middle stave the middle stave and the bottom stave is the unique one because it has a concave out groove on each side Okay, so it's concave out on each side. And after we've secured it, we can start assembly by putting the staves on each side from the middle one. So that's the first one, we'll have the second one on this side. And we make sure that this notch is nice and straight on each side. We'll bring it in as tight as possible before secure it. When you secure it, down to the crate it is often important to pre-drill it if you want to avoid cracking so we're going to pre-drill and secure each stave and we're going to go both ways towards the edges of the crate
section is completed, we can start to assemble our walls. So we will focus on the back wall first. It consists of two pieces joined together. And then the front wall consists of three pieces, two glass panels and the door. Once the walls are assembled and in a position, we will need to temporarily secure it with a couple of staves going across the top, just keeping them in place while we will continue assembling the staves from the side. Now, this is our back, back wall panels. And as you can see, we found a flat area where we could put it and assemble it properly. So we'll put it uh, with the outside face down and this is the internal face. So we're going to be joining them together and securing them with the supplied planks. So if you get a kit, you will see in the kit that you will have similar planks. So we'll have to have one at the bottom, one at the top and it will, have, will be similar for the front wall. Now if you happen to have to receive this sauna and you don't have to s space to store it if you store it outside make sure you protect it from the rain because you can see that this one was sitting outdoors for quite a while and it hasn't been protected from the rain so it absorbed some moisture in general moisture is not a big deal it's not going to damage the wood other than you can see it introduced a little bit of a bend and it started to bend around so it may be a bit tricky for us to put it to join together and would have been much easier if it was dry or at least weather protected. So we've assembled the back wall and we decided before we put the walls in place we will assemble the front wall as well and then we'll put both of them at in at the same time so that they don't stand there by themselves they are secured with the temporary staves that are gonna go across across at the top so we we'll put the front wall here you can see two panels the door at this particular point it's still okay to flip the door and you will be able to open it one way or another we decided that this is the optimal opening way and uh, we'll put it as is so we're going to secure the door with similar planks this one's uh, where one will be at the bottom and one will be at the top assembling the parts, including the walls, please pay attention to pre-drilled holes because you will save a lot of time and a lot of issues And if you, if you try to align the existing holes. All of these saunas were pre-assembled in the factory, so you, can, you basically need to find the piece and secure it to exactly the same, through exactly the same hole with the screw. So it's much easier if you actually follow the pattern and try to find the alignment. So both walls are assembled and we are ready to install them, we are ready to put them in position. So we'll start with the back wall, we'll put it in place, now it's a nice calm day, there's no wind and yet it would be handy if you have additional person who could hold the wall in the position while someone else is installing the second wall at the front because they're still not very secured and it will be just just to make sure they don't fall and some gust of wind don't take it all apart so we put the wall we will temporarily put a couple of blocks of wood just to hold it in place until we bring the front panel front wall and then we we'll put a couple of staves, staves over the top to secure them in place let's get into it
So to temporarily secure the back wall, it's a, as I said, good calm day, no wind. Just one block of wood will be sufficient or something to secure it. If you don't have someone to hold it, this could be one way of doing it. Put both walls in a position, the front wall, the back wall. In this particular case, because the wood was exposed to some rainwater, we had to unscrew the bottom staves so that they're free to move and we had to uh, force the wall into the notch as much as we can. So there's still a little bit of a restriction, but we decided to proceed with this as is, with a small gap and we will be relying on straps. When we'll start tightening the straps, they will help us to push the staves onto the walls and walls into the notch, so with the straps. But for that, we'll need to unscrew every stave later. At this stage, all we did, we just made sure that the walls are level or approximately in level and the same, same alignment, the front one and the back one. And this one is exactly the same. So it's it's quite handy to check that level in several spots, including the one across the top and on the opposite side. And we already done that, so it's pretty straight. At this stage, we can proceed with the staves moving upward and temporarily securing them with the screws until we put the straps on. Let's let's do that. sides and in our case it happened that because of, uh, because the staves are a little bit swollen they actually held on the walls quite nicely we didn't need to secure them with the screws we only did it for a couple of staves on this side and then on the other side now up to the curvature we will we're going to follow the curvature and we will continue peeling the staves all the way to the roof now we will do it until the point where we'll need to put the section for the firewood heat of glue. But we will give you some more details once we get there. So about at this time, when we have staves on one side and another side coming together and there's a bit of a space left, it's time to put the piece that has a firewood, firewood heater flue opening in it, okay? And then the critical thing here is to align this hole with this opening, right? With this hole here. And the easiest way to do it is to make sure that, say for example, this is a center line measure the distance to the center line, it's 130 mil. We measure the distance to the center line from the other side, it's 130 mil. So we know that the center line of the heater will be going right here. That means that the center line of the flue has to be aligned with this, with this gap here. And we're measuring, uh, this panel is 500, so the center line will be 250. And we're making sure that this line is in alignment with this line. Okay. Now we put it in a position as is, but now the trick is to fill the staves on each side. And some of the staves may be a little bit large, oh well, there's a standard size staves, but some of them are a little bit smaller. So we'll have to play with the full size or half stave to fill the gaps so that there is as small as possible 
uh, clearance on each side. So when we put all the space, and we did the measurement and we put the screw opening in the right place, but we realized that we can't fit all the staves the way we want. So we had to loosen them up, all of them, and you can see they're a little bit loose at the moment, so that we can put the strap over, and once the strap is in place, we can start tightening the strap while tapping each stave and letting it settle into position. So at this stage, we leave it loose, all staves are in place, they're just not secured, we're gonna put the strap on. straps in place and we tighten them just a little bit we need to make sure that all of these rods are on exactly the same level so we check that and we also check that the straps are in the right position where we want them to be in this case it's easier we just decided that we will have them next next to the support crates and that will make it a little bit easier so we don't need to do much a lot of measurements we're just gonna put them next to the bottom crates because we did a good job uh, aligning the bottom crates when we put the straps in place there's one thing that we need to make sure we check in the back of the sauna, we have an opening for the heater ventilation. We need to make sure that the strap is not covering this hole, so it must be clear. If it is, we need to move the strap away from it. split one stave into three pieces okay so in this case we measured and it's exactly 25 mil that we are we have in the next excess so we cut this piece out and we will join these two pieces and this now new modified stave will be 25 mil smaller so now this stave will fit nicely and we will we will continue with our assembly So we put all of the staves in place. Now we had to split this stave here and you can see as, as a cut through, but now all of them fit fairly well. There are no major gaps and they're all fairly straight. Okay. So it's time to start tightening the straps and tapping the staves one more time to make sure they all fit nicely. finish with all the straps we double check all the gaps the gaps between the staves are nice and tight all straps are in place and tight uh, just for additional integrity with the square saunas it's good to put, to put a couple of screws on the side so we, we decided that we're gonna put it in every second stave one screw and that will hold the wall nice and tight to the carcass so excellent everything is assembled and we are up to the benches so this particular model comes with a firewood heater and the only place for the firewood heater is at the back wall and therefore we have to put benches on the sides so each come each kit comes 
Each gear comes with pre-assembled planks on the walls and at the front. So all we need to do is just bring the benches in, put them over the top, secure them to the sides, and make sure we put a couple of support planks. There is no particular rule on which way to put it and how to put it. You can put it against the wall or you can put it as much forward as possible. The only consideration we need to make is the firewood heater will be here and we need to keep a safe distance from the firewood heater. So it's better to push it back, right? So when we push it back, we'll probably just make it that the gap at the back makes somewhat a little bit bigger than these gaps. So it looks nice and it's still comfortable to sit down and lay down. So that's about the distance we're gonna make. For additional integrity of the benches, we cut small blocks like this. We're gonna put them at the back and secure to the floor and to the bench. Just make sure you pre-drill them, otherwise they will most likely crack. For the bench, we just didn't pre-drill, but cedar is very forgiving to work with. It's very soft and will never crack when it's this wide. Still, it's a good practice to pre-drill. Now, each firewood heated kit will come with a firewood heater and will come with a protection panel. So this uh, for the wall protection panels. We have two of them, one for the inside and one for the outside. So this panel will cover the opening in the wall. Now, but because the firewood heater extension will go through the wall, we need to maintain a particular distance to the, uh, to the wall. Okay? So when you get your sauna assembled, make sure you measure that it is at least 450 by 750. And that will be a sufficient distance from the firewood, firewood feed intake through the extension for the extension, this extrusion that goes through the wall to the timber wall. And this panel will cover this wall nicely. When you're installing the heater, make sure that the extrusion that comes through the wall has again sufficient clearance from every side. And also from the bottom, it's not touching, it's not touching the wall, it's not touching the wall. It has to have at least 20-30 mil clearance. That's as a minimum. The next step is to make sure that the heater is positioned with equal distances from the benches. We need to make sure it is straight and then we put the flue on it. The flue comes with two or three sections. We have the first section, uh, some kits will have an extension, and, the, and this is the second or third section. Uh, they, uh, this, this section of the flue will have to come through the top and fit on top of the first section. When, when, this, when the flue is installed, just check that it is straight in both directions, from this angle and that angle. Once the heater is installed, we can put the protection panels in place and cover the opening. So before we start putting the panels, especially the external ones, we need to put the protection panels on the inside. Now, with protection panels on the inside, the hardest panel is the bottom panel. We need to make sure that is put in first of all. Next panel is the upper panel. Here you go. Now that the internal panels are installed, we can proceed and do exactly the same with the external panels. The next step, 
normally outdoor saunas should be covered with shingles, bitumen shingles. Now in this video we're not going to explain how to do it, but the principle of shingles installation is exactly the same as the barrel saunas, which we covered in different videos. So it is essential to basically find a starting point on each side and then apply shingles from the bottom up, layer by layer. Please watch a different video, we'll put the link in the description below. When you finish with shingles, when all shingles are in place, you finish off installation with the weather protection seal for the flu. Each kit will come with one, and if you didn't get one, please get in touch. And at this stage, because we're going to be putting shingles a different day, not today, we will put a weather protection seal today, but we're not going to secure it. So, because please remember that this seal will go all over the shingles and can be glued or secured after you put the shingles onto the roof. Today we're just going to put it without any securement just to protect it from the rain. So this is how you install the weather seal. But please remember, as I said, we install it after we finish with shingles. At the moment here, we only put it temporarily. Now, the only difference with shingles, which I had wanted to mention, is, and there is a small difference with the barrel sauna shingles installation. Because the roof is flat on the, in, on the square, on the square sauna, when you, when you apply layers of shingles, like so, when you apply layers of, so, of shingles like so, just to avoid water penetrating under the shingle and into between the staves, we need to apply one bit of silicon across, across the entire surface. So we're gonna be going from bottom up, and as you get to about here, this is when it starts to become flat surface, we need to put a bit of silicon across the entire length of the shingle before putting the, uh, a new sheet of shingle over the over the previous one like so and then we have another bit of silicon on the edge of, of this layer before we put the next layer on top of that so that just to make sure that the shingles over the flat section of the roof are watertight so we finished with the installation of the heater both panels are in place we have the weather seal I explained you how to install shingles, it's covered in a different video. Here all we're going to do is put the rocks. Now the good practice with the rocks uh, is to typically wash them, wash them with the warm water before putting them in place. Here I just wanted to show you how to, how to put them into the heater, but we're going to remove them and we're going to wash them with the warm water before using them. So to put them in you simply uh, stack them up and you try to put the coarser, larger rocks at the bottom to improve air circulation. Larger rocks like this at the bottom, and then the smaller rocks uh, over the top. Now each sauna will come with a kit uh, uh, with, a, with a beginner set of rocks. But typically it is only enough for the electric heater. For the firewood heater, it's always more beneficial to have more rocks. So maybe get a second box, second box to cover more surfaces and to improve the heat capacity of the heater. Okay, so this is how you put the rocks. Uh, with this sauna, with this sauna, we haven't shown you how to install the accessories. So the, uh, each kit comes with a thermometer, a hygrometer, and the same clock. But we've covered it in a different video as well. So uh, this is it. This is how we install a square barrel sauna with a firewood heater. If you have any questions, please send me send me an email put it in comments under the video and I'll be happy to answer them and thanks a lot for watching once again it was Artem and Andre on the camera from Shimsonas and Spas.